Welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can just skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any news for Enchanters or Hell the Last Saga, but let's get to everything else. First off, as referenced last week, several of our staff members are still on vacation until the end of August. So news and production updates may be spotty until then, but as you're about to see, we'll do the best that we can to keep everyone updated as much as possible. You'll also notice that my studio surroundings have changed a bit. I've recently remarried and moved, and Quackalope Jesse Anderson dropped by to help me set up my new studio. He and I recorded a lot of content last week, and all that content is or will soon be available on his channel, so go check that out as soon as you can. And now, with my studio up and running, I'll be looking to produce more content right here on Mythic Games Channel 2, so be on the lookout for that. But without further ado, let's get to the rest of our news today. For Joan of Arc this week, Christmas came early as we received some great news and images from the factory. As you can see, production is being wrapped up, quite literally, as this video supports, as currently all the game's parts are being assembled in their boxes. Right after that, they're going to be pre-packaged per order. We would expect that this will be done by the end of the month, and by then, we should be informing you about shipping. So, it won't be long now. For Solomon Kane this week, we just have a short production update. We received the pre-production copies for Wave 2, as well as the Wave 1 errata in a big uncut roll of paper. Our team checked everything to validate that the colors are correct and that there are no issues in printing whatsoever. We've sent our approval to the factory and we're waiting for the final step now before mass production can begin, which is printing the mass production copies. This will give us one final chance for validation and make sure that everything is 100% ready for printing. The factory has informed us that the timeline we are currently looking at is two months of print and two weeks of packing after we give our final validation. On top of this, we have to add the time that is needed to find containers. We're already on the lookout for those, so we'll try to book those as early as we can in advance. We're probably looking at an end of November to mid-December timeline to have the game on the boats. But of course, with the fluidity of the situation, we're not currently able to offer precise dates. Unfortunately, we can't just put all the containers in one boat at once, as once was the case. We're stuck sending out containers one by one in some cases when spaces become available. As always, we will keep you posted about shipping when we are able to do so. Also, as a reminder, the Wave 1 errata pack is being printed and will be sent along with Wave 2. So this is also following the same timeline as Wave 2. For Super Fantasy Brawl this week, first off, we have just a short production update. As with Solomon Kane Wave 2, we have received the PPCs of everything for Round 2 in a big uncut roll of paper. We've checked everything to make sure the colors are correct and that there aren't any issues in printing and sent our approval to the factory. We're now waiting for the mass production copies to show up, which will give us the chance to offer a last check to make sure everything's ready to go for printing. The factory has also informed us that the timeline that we're currently looking at is the end of October to start shipping things. But with how the shipping situation currently is, as we've already said, we aren't currently able to offer precise dates for it. As we said earlier, we just can't put all the containers on one boat like we used to. We have to sometimes send out one container at a time when space becomes available on a boat. As per usual, we'll keep you posted about shipping when we get to that step. 
Finally, we'd also like to reassure you that we've not forgotten about our tournament promise. Because there's still a volatile environment for FLGSs around the world related to COVID, we're currently organizing online tournaments for 2021. And we've already started planning Season 1 physical tournaments for 2022, when Round 2 will also have been fulfilled and hit retail. We're happy to tell you that the first draft of the official tournament rules has been prepared and the team is working on polishing it. Make sure you tune in to our social media outlets to learn more about our future tournaments. For Steam Watchers this week, just a quick note to say that the Paris office has recorded a playthrough in French and Quackalope Jesse Anderson and I with special guest Tommy Rice recorded a playthrough in English. Those playthroughs should be up and available this coming weekend on the Mythic Games channel, so be on the lookout for those coming soon. Concerning fulfillment, VFI Asia reports that they have completed fulfillment to the local country-specific hubs. So backers in Asia can start expecting to hear from their local hubs for delivery soon. Meeple Logistics reports that they have received their inventory and will begin shipping it out by the end of the week. The container has arrived in Australia as well and will be unloaded by VR Distribution and emails will be coming very soon to our Australia and New Zealand backers. And finally, the UK boat is expected to hit port by August 30th. So things are definitely beginning to move now. For Reichbusters this week, the container of Steam Watchers that also includes the Reichbuster Errata Packs for our Australia and New Zealand backers has reached port and VR Distribution will be unloading it and will start sending verification emails out soon. So be on the lookout for those and thank you for your patience and support throughout all of this. For Darkest Dungeon this week, we have a new development update. We know we didn't provide a monthly one and this is because Things have been a little bit slow as our team members have been taking some time off for summer vacation. The biggest change between now and the end of June is that we've started working on the final graphic assets of the game. Our art director, Stéphane Gantier, has started working very closely along with the game designers, Nick and Argyris, to produce the final and improved copies of the cards, boards, and tiles of the game. This process includes a lot of back and forth as all playtests until now were done with print and play versions of all the files. So now we're taking the time to create all of the polished icons that are needed and make sure that all the information is correctly transferred from the massive Excel sheets to the cards. In terms of the cards, the vast majority of the core box cards have been finished. Specifically, heroes and their skill cards Diseases, quirks, virtues, and afflictions, monsters, trinkets, curios, quests, and events are all done. The remaining work is essentially on the bosses, and that will conclude the cards of the core game. The tiles are final in terms of art, but do need added graphic work for all the setup and other graphic elements that are needed on them, and then the tokens and the rulebook are still works in progress. All this work that has been done serves as a template for all the expansions. So it's safe to say that for the expansions, it will mainly be bulk data input work that will need to be done. For the time being, we've frozen playtesting and will resume it when all the final assets are ready. So around September is when we should get playtesting back up and running. But of course, we'll keep you posted for everything. The reason we're doing this is to streamline the process as it would add more work and cross-checking of the files if the Excel sheets with all the data were changing during the creation of the final assets. For Six Siege this week, we wanted to talk about an important part of game development pertaining to its balance and feel, the external playtest groups and how the method with which we frame the testing is evolving. To provide for a quality game, we wanted Six Siege to be tested abundantly. And most of all, we wanted gamers from outside the company in on the testing. The last couple of months, we've had groups, either duos or more numerous groups, testing the game so that every mode and variant is tested thoroughly. Blind testing is an invaluable part of this equation. A game designer or publisher can get too deep into their own project 
and an external gaze is instrumental in detecting issues more readily. With a project as ambitious as Six Siege, aiming to have vivid interactions among operators and taking balance into consideration, the task was daunting and demanded professional investment. The playtesters scanned the rulebook and the mission book, and then we posed our requirements on them. First, they had to play no less than four games a week on a given mission and a given map with a fixed team or with a team of their own choosing. Second, they had to take notes on certain points, such as team composition, the mission, game time, the number of surviving operators at the end of the game, the number of the gadgets that were used or charges that were used, and so on. Third, they had to, of course, document all of that in an online spreadsheet so that we could analyze their findings. Fourth, we asked them for a weekly written report and held weekly meetings with all the playtesters to exchange what they observed and felt along with any other feedback that they chose necessary. Fifth, they were asked to provide precise feedback on maps and potentially problematic operators. And finally, on another online spreadsheet, they were asked to rank and rate each tested operator each time they played it considering not only their profile and gadgets, but also how well they integrated with the other operators and the synergies that existed thanks to them and the countermeasures that could be taken to bring them down. The many conversations we've had with the playtesters helped make the game easier and more intuitive to grasp. They helped the rules and the general concepts to be more understandable when first reading them. Then, their contribution to the betterment of the Control Initiation mission was precious, allowing any first games of Six Siege, the board game, to be thrilling, which will encourage players to explore the game even more. We continue to work with multiple teams who are very excited about the game, as well as working to add a few new ones to keep fresh eyes on the game. The testers will keep meeting with us in the coming months as we polish the game, both in balance and in the rule set. So thank you to all of you who have been following the game and its tests during the campaign. Your eyes and your dedication are a tremendous help. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what he might spoil. But even if he doesn't spoil anything, it's usually a pretty fun time. But that's it for this week. Stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>